There are two aspects of anthropology. The first is the physical anthropology, which you've probably heard of when you think about archaeology and Indiana Jones. Um, today our focus is on the other aspect of anthropology, which is cultural anthropology. And cultural anthropology is the study of contemporary cultures, and of course that is what you need to know as a wedding planner when you're learning about your clients and helping them plan their wedding. So today we're going to talk about several aspects of marriage, the history of marriage, what makes it important, how is marriage different from weddings. We're going to talk about the context or the importance of wedding rituals. We're going to identify what are some of the variabilities and the spectrum of weddings. And then also we're going to talk about what you need to do to succeed as a wedding planner. But culture is actually the set of stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. And so I think in the United States today we have swapped our Leave it to Beaver model and gone through our Mad Men phase where we looked at all the things that were really wrong with that Leave it to Beaver model. So a marriage is often thought of as a legal contract whereas a wedding is the ritual or the celebration. It's important to keep in mind that a marriage is about the couple, but a wedding is often about the families. Probably the most familiar form of marriage is monogamy. And today in the United States, we're having a debate about who can get married and who cannot, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Because marriage is one of the oldest forms of ritual in human society, there are many traditions surrounding them, including some weddings that have no rituals at all. As a wedding planner, you may feel overwhelmed that you have to remember all of the details of everybody's rituals and practices and traditions. But in fact, I think what we'll do today is provide you the tools to understand how you can elicit and understand all of those rituals and traditions without actually having to remember all of the details. So even though I may appear to be of Indian heritage, I actually grew up in Texas and consider myself a cowgirl. What I do know about Indian culture is that there are 13 official languages in India, which provides for a great amount of variability amongst people and amongst the traditions that they practice. The one thing to keep in mind is that it is very hard to generalize about what a family or what a couple's wedding traditions will be. Think about all of the many different forms you've seen of a traditional white wedding. And these things can reflect on uh, geographic differences, on religious differences, and just on family differences, on how a family will choose to create that very traditional white wedding, and all of the different images that people have in their head, the stories they tell themselves about themselves, about what a white wedding looks like. So for instance, in Asia today, people have a form of wedding that we think of as a traditional white wedding with a big white gown and a big white cake. Whether people come from a Christian background or not, they may choose to have a traditional white wedding in some form or another. Even within different religious traditions, you will find a lot of room for interpretation. And sometimes you may find that even your clients may not be aware of all of the traditions that have preceded them, but are only aware of the contemporary traditions. And so when you're doing your research, you will find a lot of variability. And this will be helpful to you, but it may not be the couple or the family's vision for their wedding. So that is why at New Wedding Planet, you will find all the information to cover these three basic traditions, their details, their rituals, their history, for Jewish, Hindu, and Christian weddings. New Wedding Planet is interested in educating you about green weddings, gay weddings, and multicultural weddings. Increasingly, um, people are interested in lowering their carbon footprint, making less of an adverse impact on the earth, everything from using bamboo plates to um, using solar power lighting, um, things of that nature that will help them reduce their carbon footprint. Because the laws and the definitions and the traditions of marriage are in such flux in the United States and now we're including more and more gay marriages, you will learn more information about how to perform gay marriages and for that reason there's a segment devoted to gay marriages and gay weddings at New Wedding Planet. It's worth keeping in mind that all weddings are multicultural weddings because bringing families together involves bringing people with different attitudes and backgrounds together. Because when you see people you think of them as monolithic, like if two people look alike you think you may think they come from the same background but they may not they may come from different sides of the tracks but again it's important to understand that obviously the couple has common ground because they've come together as a couple and they've come to you as a couple so explore a little bit of that commonality and you might find that people who you think of as being multi-ethnic may actually share some very fundamental values and beliefs 
And it's important to keep in mind that you don't have to be from the tradition or the background or the history or the cultural group of your couple. So for instance, you don't have to be Hindu to plan a Hindu wedding. They may opt for a hybrid wedding, but they may choose to bring in Native American traditions or Buddhist traditions. They may go bare feet or they may have it on a beach instead of a church. All of those options are open to your clients and you can help educate them as to how they can incorporate the elements they would want to incorporate and still remain true to their heritage and background.